Hello everybody, welcome to day, I don't know, 600 of the pandemic. You've no doubt noticed that this virus has shut down so many Halloween activities, including haunted houses. Now horror is something that's better experienced with a group of people. So for today's movie, I wanted something that goes along with the feel of that. So I chose The House's October Build. The movie starts off like a documentary. You're given clips from news stories of bad things happening at haunted houses or haunts, combined with interviews of the actors working there. Throughout the movie, it will occasionally cut back to the interviews from different actors as a way to change pace and go to a new chapter. The interviews start off innocuous enough, but they get a little more out there and unnerving as the movie progresses. To this movie's credit, the interviews work really well and that opening scene sets the mood perfectly. But once we get through that, we're treated to an unconscious woman in the trunk of a car. A minute later, we see she is one of the main characters, so we already find out these people are going to have a bad time. The house's October built follows around a group of friends from Ohio on a cross-country road trip to see some extreme haunts. They say they want to find the most intense one in the world. I recently found out these things exist when I stumbled into the rabbit hole of McCamey Manor, which, no thank you. One of the group members, Zach, is trying to find this secret haunt that changes location every year and it's called the Blue Skeleton. He follows a bunch of weird clues, so it's kind of like a less fun and more macabre national treasure. Now on the way, they start running afoul of some of the haunters. And the most unnerving scene in the whole movie has this young woman dressed up as a doll just walking into their RV after standing ominously outside. From there, weird stuff keeps happening and at this point, I'm remembering how my 7th grade teacher summed up the Blair Witch Project. Simply, don't go into the woods with idiots. For this one, I'd say the moral is, don't go on a road trip with idiots. Despite every sign they should give up and go home, Zach is adamant it's all part of the show. From random haunters following them hundreds of miles, to these people sneaking into their RV, stealing a driver's license, and then filming the entire thing, to finally people cornering the lone girl in the group in a bathroom and giving off really uncomfortable rapey vibes. Despite all that, Zach actually gets mad at his friends who aren't so gung-ho about continuing the trip, but in the end, they still go along with it. I'll circle back to things I didn't like, but there are some things that did right. For one, the chemistry between the group of friends is wonderful. All their conversations are natural and not at all forced. These people are going across the U.S., and the way they interact with each other is the strongest part of the movie. I also like the different haunts they went to. It made me feel nostalgic, as just about all of them are closed due to the pandemic. Also, in this movie's favor, it does creepy really well. The way they're being stalked, the subtle movements from the people behind the masks, and the little messages left to say, yeah, we're here, and yes, we're watching you. They're all off-putting in the best possible way. But back to the flaws. It's a found footage movie, so you're going to have to ignore the question of who the hell is taking the time to edit all this together? This one hand weighs the question, which is for the best. In my experience, only the last broadcast has given a good answer of why someone's putting in all the effort. And with found footage, you're going to have to deal with shaky cameras and darkness. I spent a lot of time trying to focus on something during the intense scenes, and I just gave myself a headache. A huge chunk of this movie is in the dark, and for large parts of the haunt sequence, you have no idea what's going on because it's either too shaky or too dark. Then we get to the ending. Put it simply, I hated it. You had the characters running around with the idiot ball, and when they finally get to the blue skeleton, it just ends after some screaming and hard to see sequences. It's very unsatisfying as they left multiple intriguing plots dangling, and I actually got angry when the credits popped up. There's a sequel that picks up right after, but reading the synopsis, it seems like they didn't get any smarter and just rehashed the same plot. I know it might not sound like it, but for the most part, I liked it. It captures the feel of those places, the leads are strong and a fun group to follow around, even if they do really stupid things. 
It does leave you guessing if what's happening is real or part of the experience, which is fun, but kind of loses its luster towards the end. It's a solid movie that isn't so much scary, but it does creepy better than most movies I've seen. I'd be willing to give it a higher score, but man, the ending sucked. Five Dr. Chainsaws.